Welcome to Cracking Code with Dave. There's a lot of great resources out there for learning about table views. And so here is my video on table views. So what are table views? Well, let me, uh, this is my actual phone here. I've connected it via QuickTime. And uh, table views are everywhere. Like if you look at uh, Teams here, this is Web, uh, WebEx Teams. This, uh, these rows are table views, so you can slide. Uh, all over iOS, table views, of course, in mail, table views, uh, even uh, things like uh, the news app here, uh, table views, uh, probably mixed with collection views. Now, the difference between table views and collection views is collection views are uh, tip, tend to have like a grid kind of thing. So like, for instance, eBay would be like more of a collection view, right, uh, where you've got these sections separated by grids. Uh, Netflix is also a great example of a collection view, uh, but a table view, settings is an awesome example of a table view here. So you see you've got uh, uh, these rows separated by sections. So let's show you, I want to show you how to make a table view uh, in Swift. Now, again, there's, there's so many great resources out there. Um, there's a, a video uh, by Professor Bogner called Lesson 45, Part 1 and Part 2. And basically it covers the emoji dictionary. So you can uh, try to look this up on the internet. Also, there's this uh, amazing uh, video called Custom Table View Cells in Swift 5 and Xcode 11 by iOS Academy. And uh, this is a video that I'm going to go kind of like uh, do my spin on. Um, so I kind of followed along with this. And it shows you kind of how to set up custom table cells. Um, I'd like to do my own spin on this video here. And so here we go. Let's just get started by making a custom table view cell. And uh, do we need some upbeat electronic music for this? No. Um, all right, let's start Xcode here. We're just going to create a new Xcode project, brand new Xcode project. And uh, it is going to be an iOS app. It is uh, going to use Storyboard, not Swift UI. So we're going to use Storyboard for this one. I'd actually like to do a side-by-side -side comparison of how to do the same thing in Swift UI. So perhaps that video will be next. Uh, but this is going to be called, uh, I'm going to call this product Custom Cell and Storyboard. And uh, I'm going to put that Language is Swift. I'm not going to include any tests today. Not going to include core data today. And I'm going to throw this on my desktop. Sure, why not? All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at this view controller here, shall we? So we're kind of starting uh, from scratch here. We've got just a basic storyboard with the view controller there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So you can see here's the only thing that happens is view controller. And if you click up here in the top, you can see it. Here's the class. The view controller class and it, it that means it's connected to this over here so if i wanted to rename this just for example if i want to rename this main view controller then i go back over here into the storyboard i click here and then this is where you would select your new title for that so that makes the connection between this view and the view controller over here but we all know that right all right so let's make some space here Actually, don't need space there yet. Uh, we, uh, we're currently saying this is just a view controller and that's all it's got. Uh, but we also, I would like to inherit uh, some other stuff here to make this table view awesome. And uh, the first thing we want to inherit is a UI table view uh, delegate. And the second thing is a UI table view data source. Now you need the data source and the delegate to make these table views awesome. Um, and, um, but, you know, if you look at the storyboard now, we don't actually have a table view on it. So let's go ahead and throw one on there. You'll see there's table view, table view cell, and table view controller. So, you know, you could, I suppose, just throw the whole table view controller out there. Uh, but I'm not going to do that I, because, you know, when you're creating your app, sometimes you want the table view to be in a certain design pattern. And uh, it, uh, that table view controller just kind of takes over the whole screen and uh, doesn't leave you much room for creativity. So we're going to, again, just drop uh, a table view somewhere on here. There we go. 
And uh, there it is. Now I I kind of want to fill it up in the screen here, so let's let's give it some constraints. Um, click the little constraints button down here, and uh, I want to make this zero maybe to this side and zero to this side, and let's make it I don't know 40 from the top, and uh, let's make it zero at the bottom. Okay, so now we click to add these four constraints, and boom, there we go. So there's a little bit of space at the top and bottom. Everything's good now. Uh, we need an outlet for this, right, to connect this to our view controller class. Um, let's do it this way. Instead of control dragging and clicking and all that stuff, uh, let's make the IB outlet here. And you'll see it's already yelling at me because I added some protocols up here, and so we need to add the stubs to fix that up. And let's add those stubs now before I don't like when this thing is yelling at me. So I'm gonna click fix, and if you click fix, it'll add the stubs required. So this first one is a function called um, number of rows in section. So let's just make the rows, uh, uh, let's make it four for now, four, four rows. And uh, as we saw before, there's a, there's different sections and different rows. The rows are just like the, you know, the, the, um, the list items there. And the sections are how many sections. So if you were like in Netflix, for instance, the recently added section, the continue watching section, the horror genre section, those are different sections in a collection view. Same thing goes for table views. Um, and uh, cell for row at index path. All right, this one's a little bit different. This is one where you have to create your own cell. So this is where the actual magic happens, where we create the cell and return it. Let's save that for a moment, shall we? Uh, first, I want to make that connection. Right now, we don't even have this thing connected to anything. And I really want to do that for some reason. It's bugging me. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to type in at IB outlet. And uh, let actually var uh, table of type. It's a UI table view. And I'm going to use that bang operator there because if that table view doesn't exist, then this app shouldn't even work. So it's, uh, as you'll see, it's a, a empty circle here, which means it's not really connected yet. That makes sense because I did not connect it yet. And let's go back over here in the storyboard now. Um, and uh, I'm just going to click somewhere up here. And I'm going to right click over this thing here, right click over this first button, main view controller, and it'll show you kind of all the stuff inside there. And then you can click and drag from here and just let go when it's above the table view. Boom, now it's connected. Okay. Now, all right, so this is like where it gets interesting. You could just return a generic old cell, and uh, there's plenty of videos to show you how to do that. I want to show you how to do a custom cell. Uh, let's go here back into the storyboard first. All right, here's a table view, right? And uh, and what we want is a cell to be here. Now we need a, a, a well, what's what's it called a prototype for the cell. We need a design for the cell, right? We don't want to be constrained by just using the uh, the uh, the ones that Apple provides us. We want ours to be super sweet and custom and whatnot. So I'm going to add uh, a cell here. So I'm going to go to cell again, table view cell, and uh, I'm going to throw it in there. And it adds this prototype cell. Now you can add another one. Let's add another one. Okay, cool. Now when you build and run your app, this isn't. These are just examples of what it might look like until you summon the cell or create the cell. So you need some way of differentiating this top cell from the bottom cell, or however many prototype cells you have. I'm going to click the top one here. Uh, the top one here. Uh, we want that, let's just include just some text in a text field maybe in this one. Maybe the bottom one here will have an image or something like that. So just two different blueprints for a design. Now when you type your, um, you need to come up with a term for it to re re refer to it. Um, don't be confused like I did already. Uh, and put the reuse identifier, which should go here. Don't put it in here with the restoration ID. The reuse identifier that we're going to need is going to be in this one with the lines, this uh, attributes inspector, um, and it's underneath a style here. So again, we don't want it to be a, like a basic right-left subtitled style. That would be just like this, or like this. We want it to be fancy, so we're going to make our own custom style that we can kind of, we can drag our own labels on there and do whatever we want with them. So uh, I'm going to call it uh, custom text cell. Custom text cell, that sounds good. Um, and then this one down here is going to be, I'll just call this one uh, fancy 
sell. Okay, so I'm going to click on, click on that and copy it. Now, if you type this in wrong, your app will crash. So make sure that you copy this uh, letter for letter. It is case sensitive. Okay, so here we are back in the view controller. You see we've got the table. It's connected now. We got view did load. And uh, we're saying we want four rows. And right here is where we need to create our new cell. Okay, let's make our cell here. So to do that, we do let cell equal. And then we want to refer to the table view that's up here. See, it's like this one here. Not to be confused with the one up here. Not just the table, but the table view that's getting passed into this function. And then you use the dot notation after table view, DQ, D-E-Q. And uh, we want to DQ it with the identifier 4. So DQ reusable cell with identifier. Now the identifier is what we just came up with to identify it. And there it is, custom text cell, letter for letter. And uh, for the index path right here. Oops. For the index path right here. So I'm going to copy that in there. Okay. And then we're just going to return the cell. All right, I wanted to... I want to fill some text in here. It's not perfect yet because we're not making this uh, with our custom class yet, but I want to just print uh, something out there so we can see if it's working. So the first thing we're going to test here is that this is not going to crash. So we're going to do cell.textlabel.text equals ready to rock question mark. And uh, every uh, generic cell comes with this thing called text label. That's just the generic text label that's built in. We're going, to we're going to introduce our own custom text label in just a moment, but let's just check and see if this is working. And I can already tell you right now just by looking at this that I'm missing something up here, and it won't work. Um, do this. Say you have to declare your delegate as self. So table.delegate equals self, and then you have to assign the data source also to the self. That's just assigning it to this class here. So now that we've done this and we've created a cell, we should see four cells that say ready to rock. Not with a sweet custom design yet, but uh, let's just give it a try and see if it's not crashing. If it crashes, no big deal. We'll figure out why. Look at that. We got a table view and we have four ready to rocks, which is kind of what we were expecting. Now let's say we want this to be some custom label and not just the generic ones. Now just to be clear, the generic ones can be altered a little bit in the storyboard where we showed you before. You go up here and um, there's the basic design like this, there's the left detail, there's the right detail and um, subtitle. And so you can access a, a few properties that are built in. We want our custom one. And so we got the custom one going on there now, but um, you can't just uh, connect the outlets here inside of your main view controller because it's um, a reusable uh, design. So um, you have to create this class separate, a cell class of its own. So a custom cell class. Let's do that. File, new, file. And then Coco Touch class. And we want this uh, UI table view cell. So find it in the drop down UI table view cell and I'll call this um, custom table view cell and I'll call the other one fancy table view cell. Uh, make sure it's in the language of Swift and hit next. Yep, that's a good place to put it. And it drops it in. Now don't rename this because I've had some issues where you rename these files and uh, then Swift for Xcode for some reason loses track of them. It just, I mean, you should be able to just kind of go into the file and here and then reconnect it but for whatever reason it wasn't really uh, it wasn't really working for me so I just started over and created a new cell we don't really need any of this stuff either let's just do this nothing there um, let's just make one IB outlet at IB outlet and we'll call it a weak var so weak variable and it's going to be called um, custom label of the type UI label, exclamation point, the bang operator. Uh, okay, so we've made an IB outlet, but we still have to connect it, right? So I'm gonna go over here into the view controller. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go over here to the storyboard. And uh, so we got our sweet 
prototype cell up here. I'm going to make it a little bigger by dragging that down. And uh, that may actually not affect the design. It just might just give me some more space to move, move here. And let's drop this label right uh, in the middle. And uh, let's make it uh, pretty big. And let's change the font of it and everything like that so we can tell it's different. I'm going to go in here, click the little T. And uh, let's move it to custom font. Uh, let's make it, sure, marker felt. Why not? And let's crank it up to, I don't know, 30. Now still it's not connected to the, the view controller yet. So the way that we make that connection is first you select the table view cell here. And we have to associate this table view cell with the new code that we just made. So the way you do that is you, uh, oh, do we already do that? The way you do that is you select the table view cell and then using the drop down here, you select ah, custom table view cell. That must have been a remnant of what I used to have. So make sure that this here matches this here in the class that you just made. And once you do that, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the table view cell here. And we'll come over here all the way. We've, we, we've definitely assigned it to the custom table view cell. Let's come over here to this last icon. And now we're going to hunt and hunt for our new thing. It's called custom label here. It's in the middle. And so click and drag from custom label, hover over label, let go. And now that connection is made between these two. Now, the sweet thing is when you're in your view controller here, you can say, hey, you know what? I know you were just going to make a generic uh, table view cell, but I want to make my awesome table view cell. So I'm going to make this table view cell as exclamation point because I'm serious about this custom table view cell. It's my new thing. And now instead of the cell text label text, let's take our custom label text. And now we are definitely ready to rock. All right, let's go ahead and simulate this and see if it works or not. There we go, ready to rock. Now you'll see uh, I wanted it to be big, but you see it's clipping there. It's it is not as big as I was hoping it would be. See, it's like uh, cutting the bottom off. So there's a couple different ways to handle this. Uh, let me show you the normal way to do this. Now you can, uh, out here, table view. Let's just start typing uh, height to row. Height for row at. Boom. And then I'll put a little function in here. Make sure you type it outside of this function here. It's its own thing. Um, and then we can just simply uh, return, let's see, return 100 maybe. And that'll return a CG float that's 100, which refers to how tall the row is going to be. Uh, let's go ahead and simulate this and see how it looks. And there you go, it's, it's taller, right? That's cool. You know, and the cool thing about this is sometimes you can create some custom code so that some of your cells are taller than others. Um, I want to try something different though. I'm going to comment this out. And I want to go over back over here into our storyboard. And I'd like to actually just add some constraints here. Um, and let's see. Now, if I say that, uh, and so I want this height to be snapped to always 59. And then I'll make the top and the bottom snap to 0, or maybe this one 0. But this over here uh, will leave it at uh, maybe 166. Sure. So... You know, you could spend uh, a lot of time working on constraints. So, you know, maybe you want it's, this to scale to a certain percentage of the screen. And there's all kinds of ways to do this. Um, but uh, let's try this. And let's just see, since we added these constraints now, let's see if it still clips the text on the table view now that we've added those constraints. Because I'm kind of curious. I don't know. No, it did not. So the other way to handle this is instead of uh, going here and saying, hey, every single row is going to be 100, you know, this is then we're going to say, no, 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 just make it a custom table view cell and we'll put all the design th stuff in the custom table view cell. This way, if you have a second prototype down here, let's make a second one, the fancy cell. So to do that, we're just going to go up to uh, file, make a new file, and uh, it's going to be a Cocoa Touch class again. We're going to do a custom table view cell. So make sure table view cell is selected. We'll call it a, a, a fancy table view cell. And um, 
Sure, that's a good place to throw that file. And here it is. Now we don't need any of this stuff for today. So I'm going to delete all that. And we're just going to throw a IB outlet in there. So IB outlet weak var. I'm going to call it fancy image and it's of type UI image view. And um, you'll see it's not connected yet, of course, because we haven't gone in and connected it. I'm going to go back into the storyboard here. Um, so here's the fancy prototype cell. And uh, so this way you can have multiple designs uh, laid out here in your prototypes, and then you just generate them as needed. So in the fancy cell, I'm going to put a, a, a UI image. Let's just put an image in here, image view, and uh, we'll throw it in there. Now you can spend a lot of time working on design, of course. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze this image in here, make it kind of like a little button there. And uh, maybe we'll put a text label in here too. Um, so we'll go text label plus label. Some text in here maybe. You know, you can change the color of the text and all that good stuff. We're just going to throw that there for now. I'm going to actually delete the text out of the label here. So it's got nothing to start with. And the other thing I want to do is, um, is I'm going to drag the top and the bottom there. The other thing I want to do is I want to make this like a button you can, a row you can click on to go to a next view. And um, there's an easy way to do that, which is um, over here in the uh, attributes inspector, you can choose the select, uh, choose the accessory here. And uh, we'll say, uh, and each of these things do different things. You'll see this one, Disclosure Indicator, gives you a little arrow there. That's the one we want. But you could also have like information, like a detailed disclosure or a check mark next to it or detail. And, you know, you you can also, of course, throw your own image there. But since the Disclosure Indicator is already built into Apple, I'm just going to use that. Um, and you can choose a lot of other details about your um, cell here, all the design stuff. So we got a image view label. And then this little arrow um, go, indicating that there's another screen beyond this one if you click on this row. This video could go on forever and ever. This is a lot, a lot to cover. So, but let's just make these connections and carry on. Um, so again, we're going to go to the uh, custom uh, fancy table view cell here. And uh, now I'm going to copy this down here. I'm going to make a couple or one other outlet. The other outlet is going to be called a fancy label. And it's going to be a UI label. I think that's what it's called. And uh, I'll go back here to the storyboard. And we need to uh, connect this fancy cell with the new code that we wrote there. So the way you do that is you go to this middle button here. And in the drop down menu, find your fancy table view cell class. Select that. And that exposes the table view cell um, to all the code you just wrote. So I'm going to um, right click over here. I'm going to search for my stuff here. Fancy image is right there. And the fancy label is over here. And so now the cool thing is when you're in your view controller, you'll see that here's our table view self a row at index path. So this is the thing that generates the cell. Cell is created here. We make a, any kind of modifications to the cell and then we return the cell. But what we want to do now is uh, I'd like the uh, top row to be that label one with the custom text. And then the so the top row to be that. And then every uh, other row is going to be just the one with the detailed disclosure um, with the, the, the new one we made. So the way you do that is you say, hey, uh, if the index path dot row is uh, equal to zero, and you could do greater than, less than, or you could do it specific indexes. And so if index path row is equal to zero, uh, then make this just make this ready to rock cell or else every other cell. Let's just make our own. Um, other cell, so we'll make the fancy cell in the other one. And fancy cell is not a very descriptive word. You know, if you're doing this in your own app, then you might want to actually describe what it's going to be. Um, I actually don't know what this app is all about, so I'm kind of just making it up as we go. Uh, let's see here. So this, uh, the identifier is, uh, I think it's fancy text or fancy cell. I'm going to have to double check that because if that's if that's wrong or spelled incorrectly, then your app will crash. And uh, for index path, uh, index path, just the one that's passed in here. And uh, in this in this case, we want to make it as uh, a fancy table view cell like that. 
So once we say that it's a, hey, it's a fancy table view cell, and then this uh, thing we've created now has access to all the attributes that we defined in the fancy table view cell up here. So we can we can assign an image, we can assign a label. Um, so let's go back over here and say, um, hey, fancy cell, your image view dot image is going to be, and then it's going to be an image uh, called chicken. I don't know. Oh, I have to put the named thing in here now. Named image named chicken. And uh, I got to go find a chicken image. Uh, and um, also fancy cell dot uh, label. Your label is going to be, and then here's where you'd pass some data in, but I'm going to say uh, select your chicken here. I don't know why. And then just return the fancy cell. Let's go find a, a chicken image. Okay, I've Googled some chicken images here. Uh, I don't know. Let's just screenshot this little head here. And... Uh, go to our desktop and import that. So there's this this little screenshot that I took there and I'm going to go into the assets here and then I'll open up uh, I was fiddling around with a lightning bolt as well so I'll throw the chicken in there. Um, now we've called it chicken so we have to rename this chicken. So I'm renaming that chicken because that's what I said in my code. And the other thing we got to do is just double check that uh, when we're in the storyboard over here, main storyboard um, that this fancy cells uh, identifier is just fancy cell. So I'm going to copy that just to be sure. I hate when it crashes and I don't know why. And uh, and then I'm just going to paste it in here, the reuse identifier, just to make sure it matches exactly. Um, looks like I've got a couple errors here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I was, uh, I'm used to coding in um, Swift UI. In Swift UI it's called image and here it's called UI image. And uh, what's going on with this one? Fancy cell dot label. Oh, we're not changing the label. We're changing the label text. Fancy cell, fancy label dot text. Select your chicken here. Okay, folks, let's see here. So we should get four rows created. The first row is going to be just uh, ready to rock. And I'll just say ready to chicken. I don't know what this app is. And, uh, and then select your chicken here. Okay, let's do this. All right, look at that. It's not too bad, huh? Ready to chicken? And uh, select your chicken here. And you click on it. Nothing happens yet. Um, yeah, let me show you really quick, just really fast, how to make it so when you select something here, it goes to the next page. Now, I mean, the easier way to do that would be uh, to uh, we'll open up the storyboard here. And we got to make another view, right? So I'm going to go over here, click somewhere, and... Uh, I'm going to make another view controller. I'm going to type view C. Here's the view controller. And we're just going to drop another view controller over here. So I dropped another view in here. And uh, I suppose the easy way to do that is just to hit control here and click and drag from here to there. And uh, we'll have it uh, show. Now let's see what that does. Now my hope is that that's going to show. It'll probably slide the view up uh, from the bottom. And then you can swipe back down. I think maybe that's not what we're looking for. Um, I was kind of expecting it to slide sideways, so I might break this and, and try again. Again, you got to work with your design team if you have a design team, or just kind of fiddle with the design to make sure that when you click on things and move things around and uh, add your constraints, that it kind of makes sense. It looks good. So you click on that and boom, select your chicken. So it kind of pops up from the bottom. Now when you present things in this way, Swift uh, uh, Xcode automatically kind of gives you the functionality of being able to slide and throw that throw that away. So that's kind of cool. So that's, you know, that's one way to do it. Uh, I'm going to break this connection because I want to do this a little differently because that's not reading the way, that's not working the way that I expect. I expect that when you click on that row for it to slide to navigate to the next thing. So I think what we want to do is we want to start this off with a navigation controller before it even hits this table view the way that we want to do that. So I'm going to select this first view here and then go to the editor, embed in navigation controller. It's going to throw a navigation controller in front of here. And um, and then uh, now, I believe, when we control click from here to here, show it, 
now you see it changed the way that this works. It puts a little back button up here, which is kind of what I was expecting. Let's build and run to see if it works. There are ways to handle this in code as well, but uh, you know why, why code more than you need to? So click forward, and there you go. Now you got the back button there, just which is pretty awesome, right? You can even uh, put your title of the, the page up here at the top if you like. Uh, so there's a lot of design things you can work on. Or you can, in fact, hide this top bar here uh, on the first page. So maybe you don't need that title, the, this title thing up here at the, at the beginning. Yeah, but now we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty of uh, your app development process. And uh, we didn't talk about how to pass data from view to view. That's another whole video. Uh, we didn't talk about a lot of stuff here. But what we did talk about is how to create a custom class here. So custom table view cell. And uh, again, the way you do that is you create your own custom table view cell file and uh, put all the outlets that you need in this ta UI table view cell file. You make the connection to your um, storyboard and uh, connect all your outlets. And then when in your view controller, when you create it, you have to have some logic. You know, this is one way of doing it. There's other ways of setting up your logic so that it knows how many cells to put in where and what kind of cells they are going to be. There's definitely other ways to do that. And we're not even uh, generating cells based on an array or any data at this point. Again, watch uh, Professor Bogner's video on emoji. Uh, it talks a lot about that. And, uh, and perhaps I'll uh, continue this um, chicken app along with a second video that pulls data in. And we can show you how to enable um, slide to delete and all that other good stuff that comes with the table view cells. It's really not too hard to implement that, uh, but we are reaching over half an hour on this video. So I want to cut this video uh, right about now. And uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. If you haven't already, subscribe, like uh, Cracking Code with Dave. We'll catch you next time.